Hello and welcome to Tommy Analytics. This is going to be a video on integral notation. We're going to start with explaining this part here inside the integral, the f of x. What that refers to is the function that we're dealing with. The function we're dealing with is x squared, which is just a simple parabola. And what we're concerned with is the area that lies underneath the function x squared between the points A and B. And specifically, I'm just going to roughly shade in all of the area. It's going to take up all the blue, all the yellow, everything. We approximate that area by using rectangles. So I just pulled one of them out and if you remember the area is the width times the height. Now the width we refer to as the change in x and the height we refer to as f of x. So here's the width, change in x. And the height, we're going to use the left endpoint, which maps to this point f of x, which is just the y value. Now, the problem with using rectangles is that it does not account for the error, the, all of this blue error underneath the curve. So, what we have to do is shrink the rectangles, we need to shrink the widths infinitesimally small. So by that, we're talking widths that are so small, it'll look something like this. And it gets even smaller than that. That's effectively what the change in x comes down to. As we shrink the widths, we can effectively fit in underneath the curve many, many more rectangles. So that will eliminate this blue error. When we shrink the widths infinitesimally small, this change in x symbol becomes this symbol here, dx. Now we want to add all of those rectangles up. We want to sum them all so we can have a very good approximation to the area underneath the curve of x squared between a and b. So the notation that we use for that is this symbol right here, which is really just an S that is elongated that stands for summation to sum up all of the areas of the rectangles. So we've explained what f of x means, we've explained dx, we've explained a and b, and also this symbol right here. Now one other thing that you want to keep in mind is that you may see dy. What that means is that the rectangles are along the y-axis. So the width would be the change in y. Before we were referring to the change in x along x and shrinking the widths down, but over here the widths are with respect to y. So when you shrink this width down, you get dy. If you have any questions or comments, please post below and thank you for watching.